Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. And I have a real fascinating show today. You know, you watch the show all the time. You know that we love bringing leading experts in their particular field on the show. It doesn't matter what field they're in. If we can learn from the entrepreneur and we can learn about their business and then take that insight that they have and then transfer it to our own business, that helps everybody. And that's the way we pay it forward at Dotcom Magazine. And we came across a gentleman, his name is Mr. Matt Plaskoff, and he, of course, is the president and CEO of a company called One Week Bath. And from watching the show, you know we cover Home Depot. We're very interested in the remodeling industry. We've had a number of people on the show that are experts in this particular remodeling type space, and we watch the economy. We watch what goes on with inflation. We watch what goes on with people's dollars and cents. And we're always looking for the types of companies that are really making a big, big difference. And Matt, throughout his career, I mean, he's done so much. He's actually been involved with almost 4,000 bathrooms himself. And he's done such a great job, not only in his own career, and also now bringing One Week Bath to market, but he's also been a consultant on many TV shows. They go to him as a as a go-to expert about how to do things right in the remodeling business, how to do them cost effectively, and how to make sure at the end of the product, at the end of the cycle, at the end of the project itself, that what gets put into the room looks absolutely incredible. So he has this program called One Week Bath. Matt, welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Thank you, Andy. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to have you. I sort of look at you as the king of bathroom remodeling. You're in the Los Angeles area right now. You have this great idea, One Week Bath. I want to get into it because there's so many questions we have and so many people watching the show. We're homeowners. I mean, we know that if we improve our kitchen, we improve our bathrooms, it improves the quality of our lives, but also improves the value of our home. So, Matt, before we get started, let's talk about One Week Bath. Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet, and away we go. So, uh this was I started in the custom home building and high-end remodeling world about 35 years ago. I was actually a carpenter. I went to college, got a degree, didn't work in the field that I that I studied, as many people don't. Um, and I started in construction and I started kind of from the bottom up. And um I built a very successful custom home building, high-end remodeling company that here that serviced all the Hollywood elites and everything. But I was kind of frustrated with um the long duration projects, the long duration design and sales cycles, the um, up and down profitability, the the lack of control really uh, of of the business. And so um, I had this brainchild back in 1999. It was actually called OneWeekBath.com because I thought people would go because the dot com boom was happening and I thought people would go online and they would just like buy a bathroom online. Right. And so I had this. It, it's very complicated. I won't bore you with it, Andy. But um, it was it was it was very unique for its time. I and I had this successful company going, and I didn't really have the nerve to kind of branch off and split my attention because I was doing so well. So I built business plans, and I and I dreamt about a, a business where we could build really quickly, but do quality work, and that I'd have more control. And then I um, and then I was a construction consultant for Extreme Makeover Home Edition, the TV show, as you said, um, and. Um, the executive producer came to me and said, "Hey, can we build um, projects really fast to make a bunch of you know make a bunch of money?" That was his thing. For me, I just wanted less headaches and happy customers. And so um, I said, "Yeah, well, I have this business plan." And so uh, I decided to start launching it, and um, that was 2004. So it's 20 years um, roughly. And when we first started, it was a really simple. And if you want me to shortcut this, I can, but. When we first started, it was really simple. Every bathroom was like $12,999 and you picked from it. And then what I learned was people wanted more and they wanted different and they wanted to be able to have custom selection and they wanted to remove walls and change tubs to showers and things like that. 
And so I was like, well, I, I don't know if I can do that in a week. And so I started to kind of develop these processes. Anyway, fast forward, we do almost anything, almost anything. Um, truth be told, we do, as you said, we've actually built over 4,500 bathrooms um, and we do a lot of one week projects, but um, customers were like, hey, I want to you know, do this other stuff. And I'd say, well, that might take us two weeks. And they laughed at me because they said, well, the guy down the street says it's going to be two months or three months. So it kind of became one week bath ish, I guess. Um, and I couldn't do one week bath and beyond because I get sued or something. Um, so so yeah, so we we and it's very custom. I mean, we it's not a cookie cutter thing. It's not you have to choose from particular products. It's not there really aren't too many limitations other than heavy structural work um to what we do. So as we got better and better and better and what's really cool is that the people that are with me have been with me a long time. I just uh, retired a 35 year veteran. I retired a 20 year. So these people stay a long time. And that means lots of experience, lots of skill, you know, and then I had to build it, which was my training program that I created. Um, because I couldn't just snag people off the street and say, go, go into Andy's house and build this bathroom. And hopefully it comes out nice. So we built a whole like school and a training program. And I can tell you more about that if you want to know. But that's how we built the business through this school and training program. And many of the guys and gals that started with us, you know, 20 years ago are still with us from that training program. So it's really cool. Yeah, I love it, Matt. Of course, what you're explaining is really an entrepreneurial process. And for the people watching the show, you're hearing a classic entrepreneurial success story of someone that has gone through it. Someone that has made changes along the way based on the input of their client base. And of course, your mission is really to eliminate the risk and stress of bathroom remodeling. And when we talk about the overall customer experience and the beautiful design that you've become known for compared to the other remodelers, you really look at this as a unique selling proposition. Again, for the people watching the show, you know we talk about this all the time because your unique selling proposition is really you want it to be stress-free, all-inclusive, but with this high-quality work that you've become known for. And what I love about it is when people reach out to you, they understand by talking to you and your team that high-quality doesn't have to take forever. And that's really- oh, That was really our powerful. tagline. Right? That was, a ta that was a tagline we put on one of our things. So it's funny that you say that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so to speak to that unique, what's unique about it, because speed isn't the only thing. In fact, I don't think it's even the biggest thing. Um, I think there are two things that we do that nobody else does. Uh, I, I thank my stars every day that nobody was able to copy it. I think we're just too far down the road for anybody to do it. Number one, um, we design in the home with essentially a mobile showroom um, and we take the client through a comprehensive selection process in the home, price it to the penny on the spot and help them design a bathroom that's functional, looks beautiful, that fits within a budget that we've talked about. Nobody does that. Most contractors, you call the contractor, they're going to say, okay, you know, Andy, go to this tile store, go to this fixture store, go pick out what you want or hire a designer and design your bathroom and let me know and I'll tell you how much it costs to build it right? Part of this was born out of me being the control freak that I am and saying, the only way I can make a guarantee to Andy that I'll be out of his house quickly is if I have everything I need before I start. And the only way I can make sure that everything's perfect is if I'm involved in the upfront process. So the upfront process, making it easy, going to what you just said, making it easy, um, that's number one, because nobody wants to schlep all over town, like looking for stuff. And they don't even, they don't know what they're doing anyway. Number two, and this is the other unique thing, is that most contractors are using subcontractors who don't work for them, or they have guys that work for them, but they don't have, they don't make the commitment. This is the main thing. They don't make a commitment to have a crew in the home every single day until it's done. And that's critical because a bathroom shouldn't take more than a week or two to build. I mean, we have a system and a process and we have procedure manuals on how to do it. But the reality is that if you get everything and you show up every day and you have the right crew, 
knows what they're doing with the skill and can produce quality, you can get these things done quickly. It's that commitment of being there every day. And with subs, you can't control it. You can't control the quality. You can't control who's coming and going. You can't control whether they understand the project. You don't have total accountability. But with my teams, I come in. This is the really the secret sauce of the whole thing. These guys work for us. They're on our payroll. They're trained. They're, you know, been with us a long time. And that's the magic of it, really, if that makes sense. So that's yeah, the unique. I love it. I love that's it, man. Unique. Because what you're really saying and I stepped on you for a moment there, but what you're really saying is that you have a team. You have you have a, a group that's been with you a long time. You're not having to go out and find different subs that don't show up to work. And it's it, you have a process. And this is what we want to talk about with you because what you put together, this process is really ingenious. And for, again, the entrepreneurs watching the show, the CEOs, the found, founders, the C-level executives, if you're thinking about building a business or even the startup founders that watch the show, you have to have a process. And what Matt's done is he's put together a very nice process. It starts with a questionnaire so that they get to understand you and they get to understand what your needs and wants are. And you get to speak with a pre-designed coordinator. Then they speak with a designer after that in a 30-minute phone consultation. And then they bring this thing, which we want to talk about because this is super cool, Matt, the mobile showroom. Let's talk about that because that's super cool. Right to your home. And then the meeting concludes with a completed design program, I guess you would call it, right? Yeah. So um, it's like clowns coming out of a VW that's coming out of my expedition. But um, our sales team, sales design, we're going to put them together. Uh, it's a it's a team of two who um, have design, you know, experience, and also um, the salesperson is involved in kind of managing the budget because things can get out of control. You know, like you start picking something that's you know the four thousand dollar toilet, but we've had a conversation with you that said, hey, this bathroom is going to cost twenty five grand, and you picked a four thousand dollar toilet. That's not going to happen, right? So th there's this collaborative effort. So we come out, uh, we 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 uh, we measure the space, and then we sit down at the kitchen table. We cover the table with a tablecloth. We're very you know careful, and then we just start bringing in tile samples, cabinet samples, countertop samples. Now people will say to me. How could you possibly have what I want? Like, because everybody's different, right? And so there is a there is some pre work associated with that, where we ask them to go on our website and look at some of the bathrooms we built to give us some idea of what they like, so we can be prepared. But I'm going to tell you, some people are unique, but people aren't that unique. That you know, most people gravitate towards certain styles and certain materials and what's hap, and and then they trust us too. Hey, what's hap? You know, what what what's good. And so the, our, our sales team has uh, Tahoes and expeditions and whatever, and then we just show up with everything. So there's no running around to showrooms. There's no, and the cool thing about this too, is that we can bring the products into the light of the home where they're going to be. Instead of like, I, I can't tell you how many people, they go to showroom, they find a tile they love, they bring it home, it looks totally different. So this is just a smart way to do it. And then we also have a software program that we wrote that allows us to price it right there on the spot. So the other challenge, so it's all process driven, right? So the other challenge is that um, contractors fail at this process. They come out, they spend some time with the homeowner, they go away, and then the homeowner has to call them every day for three weeks. Where's my bid? What's going on? Oh, I forgot. Uh, and so we don't do that. We have the software where we're putting it in the computer We've got a completed design. We've got a completed selection list. We've got a complete price to the penny. And literally sign a contract, take a deposit and go away. And the customer's done. Um, I did one uh, this week and she was like over the moon, like dancing because she was happy that she didn't have to go anywhere and you know, telling everybody this is amazing, you, you know, whatever. And so then we go away. So then the next part of the process is making sure that the, well, I'll, I'll let you ask the questions, but that's the design process. That's the mobile showroom idea. Um, and it doesn't need to be some giant, you know, sprinter van or anything. Um, the, we, we have figured out what we need to bring that will give us 99% success rate when we meet with Andy. Yeah, I love it. You know, this is the way it's moving. This is the way it's going. Expertise, specialization. We talk about it all the time on the show. 
I'm doing a remodeling project myself right now. We wish you were in Arizona, but you're not here yet, but I'm sure eventually you will be. But it's so fantastic because you offer an all-inclusive design build company that really delivers this white glove remodeling experience like nobody else. And when I think about it, I would love to, in Arizona, call you and say, okay, here's the bathrooms. I've got three of them or two of them or however many we have. Let's go bring the kitchen guy or gal in. Here's the kitchen situation. Let's go bring the flooring first. Almost where I don't have to hire a big contractor who's you know running around town trying to find subs that they can't rely on. If I could find a kitchen company like yours that they have their own contractors, their own in-house people, and I know it's going to be done in the most efficient and economical way and look beautiful at the end, this is the way it's all going now. This is the way that I see it's absolutely happening. So you're way ahead of the curve. Let's talk about a little bit because with your business, you're localized. What are the plans? How do you take this business from a local business and then you know extend it out if that's part of the plan? So, so I'm going to tell you, you guys a secret, and I'm, I'm sure no one will tell anybody, but we do kitchens as well, but we don't advertise it. And so what happened was, is about four years into this business, our customers would come to us and say, you guys should adapt this model to kitchens, you know, um, because you only have one kitchen in a house. You might have multiple bathrooms, you might, whatever. Kitchens obviously are not one week projects. Typically we'll do a kitchen in four weeks where a regular contractor situation will take three months or something. But we did adapt the process. It's not as slick because kitchens are more complex in some ways. Bathrooms can be complex. There are fewer decisions in a kitchen, but the layouts can be complex. So anyway, that's a secret that now is out. Um, the the And we were only doing it for repeat and referral customers because they were asking us and now it's kind of gathering some wins. So rollout, rollout's what you're talking about. My vision for this company has always been from the beginning to replicate. That was my vision. That was my entrepreneurial vision. And my original entrepreneurial vision was to franchise. And I'm not going to say, you know, like you deal with a lot of business people and everything. The franchise model was not a good model for us. We did it. We franchised it. We did all the documents. We got approved. I couldn't sell a franchise to save my life. It's, you know, remodeling is not a, a subway sandwich store. It's, it's more complicated. And so what I, so in 2012, a buddy of mine in Kansas City, uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, um, and I launched One Week Bath Kansas City. And we did it. And it worked. And so all I was trying to do was prove that I could teach someone else how to do this, that I could, from a distance, roll it out. And so we proved it. But my buddy was like, you know what, I want to retire. I don't want to do this anymore. And we cut it down. What I, So I know I can do that. And so... I've moved to what we'll call a hub and spoke model where we centralize, you know, admin. It's a very common business model. Centralized admin, centralized marketing, centralized purchasing, centralized those things, and then have satellite, uh, smaller warehouses, sales and production units. So our, we're, we're planning on like, like actually, even though we go to San Diego, right now it's a lot of it's a lot of work because it's travel and all that stuff so number one unit is to launch a satellite in san diego hopefully 2024. yeah Orange i love, County. It. I love County, it. 2024. by the way my i have a dear dear friend and you probably know him in arizona i won't say his name on the podcast because i you probably don't want me to but um he was a builder and he had his own radio show and he's just a really wonderful guy but he called me about opening a one-week bath in Arizona. So stay tuned. Um, I have people that want me to open it up north, Northern California, Palo Alto, those areas. There's tons of money, you know, there's money to be had. Um, and there's frustration. Every, my dream was to have one in every NFL city in the country. It's a big ask. You know, we had to work out the kinks and it's a good thing because you don't want to replicate problems. Right. Right. So we're kind of at that place right now where, yeah, we could we could start to branch out. 
Yeah, I love it. You've, you've looked at different models. Again, this is a great entrepreneurial journey. Matt's bringing you inside the entrepreneur's mind right now of what the way in which he's thinking. And that's really powerful because when you understand the way that an entrepreneur thinks and the different iterations of a business, it helps you think about your business and the way in which you want to expand because we know businesses have to expand and they have to keep growing and growing and growing. And one thing that I think about when I look at what you've done, Matt, that's really interesting is you talk about bathrooms in terms of the details and the systems, not the square feet. And I want to get into that a little bit. When you talk about that, what do we mean by that? Is the bathroom really measured by by what has to happen with all the pipes and what has to happen with, you know, all of the intricate, you know, water handling systems versus the actual square footage. What do we mean by that? Are we talking about a pricing model? Yeah, we're talking about like how, how it's priced. Yeah. Because people go, oh, it's a tiny bathroom. It's not that many square feet. How could it cost that much a square foot? And so is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about that. The pricing on a square foot versus the complexity so, of the details so, in the system. Yeah. Square foot pricing, like if anybody's doing square foot pricing, it, it has its place. I'm drywalling a house. I can calculate it by the square foot. I know how many square feet a guy can put up in an hour. I can figure that out. I know how much concrete I can put in by the yard. I know how much, like that kind of stuff, right? But you literally have a minimum of 11 trades in a bathroom, a minimum. And so, you know, and complexity. Okay, so the way we naturally select ourselves, <laughs> this is how I'm going to put it, by the way, all my process thoughts and everything um, are are very lean oriented. There, it, this is I've tried to model this after a manufacturing model, not a construction model, because residential remodeling is very you know look, it's a bunch of craftspeople who are wonderful who had entrepreneurial seizures, you know, as Gerber says, and they start a business and they don't have any systems and processes. So what we do is what we figured out, we broke bathrooms down into tiny pieces and operations, not two sinks is going to cost more than one sink. You know, a, a, a tub shower combo is going to cost less than a stand up shower because you've got to do the shower pan. So what we did is we figured out how long, I mean, 4,500 bathrooms, and we just keep making it better and better and better the age of the house is it upstairs is it downstairs what city is it in the city can matter is it a condo or single family residence huge huge issue um is it on slab is it on raised foundation what you know and so there's all these factors that we have in our system so that and when i mean natural select i mean we're going to be too expensive on projects that we don't want not not because we don't want them but because we're smart enough to know that some poor person that comes out and bids it and has no clue is going to just lose their rear where and so we're going to be less expensive on product projects that are simpler that we you know that we know are going to be simpler and more expensive on more difficult projects and it's a real it's really kind of amazing um in terms of accuracy so when i have a phone call with you you talked about the the pre-phone call if i have a phone call with you or one of my people has a phone call with you they're going to ask you all this information i could ask you five questions about your bathroom and i could tell you with some margin of error some very good margin of error what a range might be for your project and the only way i can do that is because i have all this information so when i get into a, a discussion with someone who says well, how could it possibly, it's only 50 square feet. How could, like that makes, I, I say to them, here's what I say to them, Andy. Okay, let's expand that bathroom four feet in both directions, okay? Now you just went from an eight foot long bathroom to a 12 foot long bathroom and a six foot wide bathroom to a 10 foot. Now it's 120 square feet. That's a lot of square footage, right? Well, what have you really increased? You've increased the floor square footage. You might have more paint. You might have a little bit more floor tile. Yeah, the cabinet might be bigger, but not incrementally, not twice as much. 
you know, so small spaces are expensive because you're cramming a lot of stuff into a smaller spot. So square footage pricing on a bathroom or a kitchen is I it's insanity in my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It really does make a lot of sense. And of course, we think about your team. You mentioned your team. You have a great team. I know I'm keeping you a little over. I want to get into entrepreneurship just a little bit, but I kind of have a interesting question because sometimes these kitchens and baths and flooring and you know the colors, they go through fads. And What's the what's the prevailing wisdom from your perspective for someone thinking about doing something? Do you go with the latest fad? Does that does that depend on how long you're going to stay in the home or whether you're doing the home to flip it? Like, what are some of those components about following the current fads versus maybe staying in a classical kind of a design? Yeah, first of all, take as much of my time as you wish. I I, I I'll give you an hour, or I'll give you an hour and a half. I don't care. I like talking about this um so i think you hit it on the head one of the first questions we ask is you know how long are you staying in the home right and who's using the space and those types of things um and if someone says to me yeah this isn't our forever home we're leaving in two to five years then you have to design something that is more neutral right um, and not fad based, right? Um, because neutral, because you want more people to walk into the space. And more, if you're selling the home, you want people to walk in and go, oh, this is tasteful. This is nice. You know, you don't want to like walk into like a Cardinals bathroom or something, you know, like, so, so I, I think that, I think that a, how long you're going to stay has impact. Um, trends, there are trends like right now, hot trend right now, gold fixtures. Like we had polished brass like way back when, and I tore out so much polished brass, like I could have been a billionaire. And, and now everybody's like, Oh, I want brush brass. I want, you know, like I want gold again. Right. And so fads do come around, but there are some, there are some, you know, look, people do subway tile. They've been doing it for like the twenties. I don't even know, Tur turn of the century, you know, there are certain things that are consistent. So I think it depends. And sometimes customers say, you know what, we're getting buried in the backyard. We don't care. We want it to be for us. Like the one that I did this week, she's like, I want it to be like Marilyn Monroe cigar room bathroom. Like, you know, like dark and like, I, you want to lay in a tub and smoke a cigar, like, like that kind of a thing. And yeah. she's kind of kicking yeah. around, but still, but that vibe, right. Well, I guarantee you, if they try to sell the house, someone's going to walk in there and go, this is dark, but she's like over the moon. So I think it just, I think it really depends. The good news about us is that having so many under, I tell people this, having so many under our belts, we know what people like. Like we know, and I've even had these conversations with very prestigious fixture companies that I will not mention where I've said, hey, I have data on what people like. I have 4,500 plus bathrooms worth of data on what toilet they like, you know, what they buy. That's valuable, you know? So we use it just to help homeowners when we want to build something, when we want to do something that's, you know, more neutral. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You're data driven as well, based on your experience. Oh. And you can bring that to the table when somebody's asking you a question. So in other words, not only are they telling you what they want, but you're asking questions to your clients so you can tell them perhaps what they need. And I love that so much. Let's go to entrepreneurship. It's very important that we discuss this from the brain of, you know, the man that's sort of going to be changing the one week bath program. Of course, you do kitchens as well. Let's talk about entrepreneurship. For the younger people watching the show, maybe they have a startup, maybe they're going through a tough time, maybe freezing in the frame, maybe they're having some difficulties. Matt, what kind of advice can you give to the entrepreneurs oh. watching the show about what it takes, what it takes yeah. to keep on pushing? I have so much advice. Um, number one, growth is hard. Anybody that tells you that you can go from X to Y quickly like a million to 35 million in five years or whatever it is growth is hard 
And I became a student. Uh, there are many studies, the Griner study, there's other studies about the growth, you know, how the growth graph looks. And you have to be prepared to invest. You have to have the right people. You have to have the right systems and processes. And what got you to a million won't serve you at 5 million, won't serve you at 10 million. Right. So, and, 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 and so I, I think that just knowing that um, look, when you first start your entrepreneur, you, you don't know what you don't know. Like, and you're not even scared because you don't know, like you're just going for it. Like when I started, I mean, I told you before uh, on another call that, you know, I started with candy bars in my playhouse when I was 10 years old, selling them to kids, you know, I didn't know about, about any risk, like someone could get sick and I could get sued or something. So, you know, you're balancing risk with return, of course. But I say, A, surround yourself with a group of other entrepreneurs that know more than you, like some of these roundtable groups, right? I belong to a lot of different roundtable groups over over the years. And one of the one of the best ones I ever joined was a remodelers round table group when I first started. And I learned not only from this, you know, there's, there's other, there's Vistage, there's YPO, there's all these things. Right. And so, I, I mean, I'm in, I'm in one right now, which is great. I have similar industry, big time billion dollar company people helping me. Um, so I, like I've been doing it 35 years. I still, I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. So Humble yourself, put your ego away, get advice. A coach is awesome. Like if you can find the right business coach that you can work with once a week or someone from your industry that has the experience or maybe not in your industry and have someone that you can bounce ideas off of, that's, I think that's great. So yeah, I think that the two things that I would say, well, the, the main things that I would surround myself with would be, and then, and then podcasts like you, you know, like I, I think th there's so much learning to be done, you know, while you're driving around, buy a book, listen to a book, listen to a podcast, just keep trying to educate yourself. Um, so I think education, my dad was a college professor, so I grew up with education, but I think I'm always trying to educate myself even today, but I think having a coach, having a round table group and reading, being voracious about business reading and podcasts and shows is, I guess it's all learning, right? It's all about learning. Yeah. It's great so, advice, Matt. It really is. So. And what you've really put together at one week bath is amazing. Someone recently told me you either be the disruptor or you get disrupted and you're definitely disrupting the space and people are talking about it. You're in Los Angeles now soon to have that hub and spoke model that you spoke about, Matt. We're real delighted to have had you on the show. People reach out to Matt. I, even if you're not in the Los Angeles area, you know, Matt's become known for helping people all over the country with with questions and you can reach out to him anytime. So I wanted to thank you, Matt, so much for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series today. You got it. Thanks so much, Andy, for having me. I'm so happy to be able to share my knowledge if with others and I appreciate what you do. So good to see you.